Well, God bless you, people of God, and in particularly my fellowship family and our friends who tune in with regularity to our daily wellness check and our morning meditation. We greet you today in the precious, perfect, powerful and pronounced name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Uh, today is Thursday, May the 21st, 2020, and it's a thankful Thursday. Why thankful Thursday? Because as I look back over my life, I can see how the Lord has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, he's never left me alone. He forgave me and he kept on blessing me. I know that's the words to a song and you probably know it too. But the reality is my God has kept me. And so for that, I am thankful. And today, hopefully and prayerfully, as we uh, spend a few moments doing our daily wellness check, you've already done your self check and you're doing relatively well, all things considered. Uh, and I wanted to take a few moments, of course, as always, uh, as I'm on my way to videotape for our worship experience for Sunday morning, wanted to share with you uh, our morning meditation, our scripture for the day is birthed out of first Corinthians chapter one, uh, Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, that first chapter, I want to share one verse in your hearing that's verse 10. And today I want to read it from the New English translation of the Bible uh, for clarity's sake. New English translation of first Corinthians chapter one, that 10th verse reads this way. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to agree together, to end your divisions and to be united by the same mind and purpose. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Very powerful passage of scripture wherein Paul recognizes that uh, there is division within the Lord's church. Let me say this, and I alluded to this, I believe, earlier this week. Uh, there are times in life where crises, situations dictate that uh, nothing else matters other than survival. It becomes inconsequential uh, strife and division and things that are uh, really uh, not essential to maintaining uh, life as you know it. Let me say this. The coronavirus, the corona crisis has created a climate wherein um, divisions of any kind ought to be squashed. This is a time where the world as a whole has to come together. Um, and let me, let, me, let me say that if the church can't come together, it'll be very difficult for the world to come together. Paul is speaking to believers at the church at Corinth who are encumbered by divisions that have separated them and vehement problems have caused clicks. And I wanna share with us who are Believers, this is a season where we got to be on the same page. And the King James Version says, speak the same language. This passage says we got to be on the same page and have the same mind and um, the purpose ought to be universal. And let me say this. This is a season wherein um, there is no room for any foolishness not within the church and not in the world as a whole. There's a whole lot of foolishness going on and the last place we should see it is in the Lord's church. This passage seems to suggest um, that what's critical in this season, if nothing else, is maintenance. This is a season wherein people are just striving to maintain. The reality is, there are some businesses that won't make it through this season and won't reopen after it's over. There's some people who will lose, will lose their homes. There are, as we well know, people who are losing their lives. There are people who are striving to just maintain some degree of homeostasis. And there's some churches that won't even make it back. The doors won't open after this season. So maintenance is critical and uh, our, our purpose should be to maintain, if nothing else. 
And then the reality is the church can afford just to maintain. We not only have to maintain, but this here's a clarion call to do ministry in times like these because people are looking for answers. And so the church not only has to maintain, it has to do ministry. We are the salt of the earth. We're the city that's set on a hill. But if the salt loses its savor, the text says it's good for nothing. If the city um, that's set on a hill uh, and the light of that city is hidden under a bushel, what good is it? We've got to not only maintain, but we've got to do ministry. But let me take it a step further. While the purpose should be to maintain, the purpose should be to do ministry. And that's not only for churches um, all across the world, but um, people who are um, born again, we got to maintain and we've got to do ministry, but nowhere on that list do you see monkey business. <laughs> There's divisions that had crept into the church at Corinth that kept them from doing ministry and kept them in many instances from being as viral as they could. Monkey business has no place in these times. The reality is, it's critical that we put away all strife and all, all envying and uh, all divisiveness. When we get out of this, any church that comes back and are still arguing about what colors the choir is going to wear, what the uniforms for the usher board is going to look like, or who doesn't wear white on first Sunday like they're supposed to? That's monkey business. And I want to suggest uh, that right now God is making it plain uh, that he's in charge. And what ought to matter for the Lord's church is who's saved and who's not. What should be critical and uh, what should be the purpose of the Lord's church in this season is to work out your own soul salvation. And while you're working out your own soul salvation, help somebody else get saved and see that Christ is the only answer. That's what's critical. That's what's pertinent. That's what's really purposeful in this season. Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord, to agree together. Let's be on the same page and let's make sure that we're about our father's business. We got to maintain, but we got to do ministry and we've got to put away all monkey business and make sure that at the end of the day, uh, we are the church that God would have us to be. We are the people that God would have us to be as believers because we have the power to move the hand of he who can turn everything around. In accordance with 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if we get on one page, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. I don't know about you, but, but I really want to do all I can to move the hand of my God and make that my purpose, that their breed, their be a healing that's brought to this land. God bless you. I had to get that off my chest and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I say thank you for you being God all by yourself. Thank you, God, that you are uh, able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God, thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells within every believer. I pray now, God, that you would afford us the ability to decrease while you increase, that you would allow us to be drawn together with one mind and one purpose, that we all recognize we're on the same team, every believer locally, nationally and globally. Help us to come together, God, with the sole purpose of seeing your hand move with the power that you have to heal our land and we give you glory and we give you honor in advance 
but we know that you are able. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we pray. Amen. Listen, as always, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace is my prayer. Shelter in peace and shelter in place. And we will see you next time.